Hello, we are team number three. My name is Neha and my teammates are Luke and Adam. Our project today is cyclist detection using Detectron model. Next. Autonomous vehicles are a trend today. Everybody wishes things to happen at the click of a button. Pedestrian safety is highly regarded and there is a race to improve its efficiency on a day-to-day -day basis. The main objective here is to develop algorithms to detect objects of interest, such as a bicycle and car, which are commonplace on the road, which can also be seen on the image present on the screen. With the same view in mind, and to help prevent traffic accidents, our team is contributing our bit towards object detection, where we are detecting cyclists specifically in our decided data sets. Next. We are using Detectron 2 model for the same, which we will also discuss in the coming slides. Let us now discuss about the data set which we have chosen for our project. This is the Kitty data set available online. We have compiled various frames from videos taken while driving. Images are of size 1242 into 375 pixels. Annotations for cyclists have also been made in the data set, along with the bounding boxes. The data set also offers levels of difficulty for det detection in the form of occlusion. If an object is more hidden, it gives a higher level of occlusion. As far as the number goes, we have around 30k odd images for autumn season and 31k odd images for the winter season. In this set, the cyclist numbers are around 6,784, which we split as 5,750 to train and 1,034 images to test. Below here, you can see an example image from our autumn data set. Let us now go through the architecture of Detectron 2 model. So the Detectron 2 model itself is created by Facebook AI's researches software team. And it consists of an open source system designed for object detection. This is implemented through PyTorch with a modular with a modular design, allow users to create custom implementations and is trained through GPU to make the training faster and simpler for scaling the large models such as our own. In the following slide, the architecture is shown. So we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. The architecture here is shown and it consists of a, Mac, a mask RCNN with an FPN. So the first block of the network is a feature pyramid network. This one, extracts the feature maps and because Detectron 2 is a multi-scale system, it extracts features for multiple scales to allow us to see further away objects and objects that are closer to say a vehicle. This is especially use useful when it comes to trying to find cyclists. This is done by using a ResNet to downsample the image twice using a seven by seven convolutional layer. And these results are fed into the second block the region proposal network. And on the next slide, we'll see some examples that are, so we'll go ahead and move to the next slide. These are some examples of the feature maps that are taken from various scales. Okay, these are combined with the ground truth box annotations and are put through three convolutional layers in a three by three objectness layer to produce a probability masks. These masks are used to create anchors and these anchors are relative to the box shape compared to the others. From here, an IOU matrix is used to compute the proposals compared to the ground truth boxes. These are labeled as the foreground, background, or neither objects. These proposals are then used to compute the delta between it and the ground truth, and from there are computed the loss. The RPN uses two loss functions. It, functions. An L1 loss function is used for the localization, while a binary cross-entropy loss is used for the objectness itself. These go into the final block, the box head. This is based out of mask RCNN. It fine-tunes the proposals using fully connected layers. It generally splits the data between masks, class, and boxes. However, our data set did not provide mask data, so all we were worried about was the pipeline that led to the boxes and the classes. And this uses a flattening layer followed by two fully connected layers to produce the final box predictions. After non-maximum suppression, a maximum of 100 objects are produced. 
and these contain the boxes and probability that the object is a cyclist. Training our model on our 5,000 some images, we can see that we found maximum accuracy at around 1,000 iterations. Previous uh, attempts at lower iteration counts, such as 300, 400, led to lower classification percentages. We found that roughly around 800 to 1,000, a plateau was reached. On the top right, you can see uh, figure classification accuracy. As you can tell, as we increase the uh, iteration, we get further and further increased uh, figure classification accuracy. And on the bottom right, we see a false negative ratio. Similarly, as we increase iteration, we also see a, a lower ratio of false negatives. And lastly, on the bottom left, we see a box regression loss. For a thousand iterations, the uh, box regression loss is decreasing, and this is what we hope to expect as the machine learning algorithm learns approximately where the box is around the object that it is already finding. Another question is, how does it do on its own training data? Ideally, if you train on the data, it should be predicting very well on its data. In general, this is the case, and we see in the top right, the predicted, uh, there is five cyclists in the image. Each of them have a percentage associated to it. As you can see, all of them have a pretty high percentage above 90%. And then on the bottom of below it, you see the actual cyclist. So while I did identify all five cyclists, the bounding boxes are a little bit different. So we see over here, the actual bounding box is quite a bit bigger, but and the predicted one's a little bit smaller. Another issue we found is for the predicted over here, it assumes that a stop sign may be a cyclist, when in reality, the cyclist is actually very small over here in the corner. So it finds two things, but in reality, there's only one classification identified there. On our test data set, it generally classified very well. However, there are a few instances where the algorithm misses or our training misses. An example here is on our predicted. We have a cyclist predicts a 99% in the red box, but on the left-hand side, it, pre it falsely predicts that the pedestrian there with his dog is actually a cyclist, 84%. As you can see in the ground truth actual, this is not the case over here. There is, there is no cyclist there. Another area where it's hard for the uh, hard for the machine learning model to learn is particularly with occlusions. As you can see in top left, there is a cyclist, but I did not predict it. In actuality, there's a cyclist. As the data is compiled from a bunch of images from moving vehicles, we notice that as the cyclist moves away from the, the bushes, is actually able to be detected. And so this is a particular tough area of classification where you have partly occluded objects. In general, we found that it, it found about 90, 90 plus 90% 90 accuracy on all, on all the uh, classifications. But as in all uh, trust testing sets, it can't find all of them. Thank you very much for our presentation and thank you for listening.